In this video, all of these really old NVMEs are going to outperform the latest and the greatest NVMEs, like your Gen 5 or your Gen 4. How's that possible? Well, it's uh, pretty straightforward. We're going to use this workstation and these NVMEs to outperform the modern hardware. It's not that complicated. Trust me on this. I'll show you the whole process. We've got a very simple video lined up for you in a four-part segment. First part, we're going to fit the hardware to our system, the HP ZA G4. Second part, we're going to go fast. Third part, we're going to break a few things. And fourth part, I'll show you the results, whether you should consider doing this. But here it is, the NVMEs in question. By my count, that's 20. Can you believe that's quite a lot? So we've got our 128 gig NVMEs, maybe a few USB-C adapters, and we're even going to install this quad NVMe adapter. That's right, four NVMEs in one adapter. We even have a dual M.2 NVMe adapter. That's right, two NVMe slots. Now, overall, these are pretty cheap adapters. I don't even know if they work, to be honest. We will test that. But uh, this one's quite nice. It's got a dedicated fan, which is kind of important to keep these things cool. But uh, first things first, all of this hardware is going to find its way into the HP Z8. Uh, this hardware here would be a future video. Stay tuned for that, though. But I have to give a quick disclaimer. Don't know if you're familiar with Murphy's Law, but if anything can go wrong, it will go wrong. And in this case, something definitely went wrong. You're going to want to stay tuned to see what happened there and how we problem solved to actually get this thing to work. It was uh, quite a headache. So how do we go about doing this? How do we get all of these NVMEs to perform better than modern hardware? Well, it's simple. We're going to use RAID. You're probably familiar with RAID 0, a striped volume, RAID 1, a mirrored volume, RAID 5, the one with parity, and then RAID 6 with dual parity. And obviously there's RAID 10, which is a stripe of mirrors. Now, if none of that made any sense, don't worry, because we're just going to do one of these, which is called RAID 0. It's going to take those NVMEs, combine them together, and give us incredible speeds. Now, dust size matter. You're probably wondering this as well. Uh, for these particular NVMEs, I went for the shortest ones on the market, and truth be told, it doesn't actually matter, but it does matter if space is important for you. So keep that in mind. More memory chips, the longer they are, the more memory you fit on them. It's pretty obvious. What do you think I was talking about? Now, very importantly, these do not fit on any system. You need a high-end system with bifurcation. If you're not sure what bifurcation is, I guess we can quickly explain that as well. Okay, we may, may do that as well. Now, the HP Z8 workstation is optimally suited for this experiment because it has a very small number of PCI slots, only a casual nine. You heard that right, nine PCI slots. And actually, Basically, all of them support bifurcation, except for one, which is kind of cool. So this allows us to install all of these. Now, I probably should explain this slightly. You might be familiar with the X16 PCI slot, the full length. We also get a rather deceiving slot, which is a full length mechanical, only four electrical lanes. We've got to watch out for those. They can't do bifurcation. So as a quick demo, X16, 16 electrical lanes, easy. We split it at X4, 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 or X8, X8 giving us extra room to install more NVMEs. You can also get the eight lane version and a four lane version of the same slot. So most motherboards have the X16 with four electrical lanes, which isn't quite the same. Now, if you are interested, definitely check a related video where I cover these in more detail. At least four different quad adapters of which the JHE adapter here was actually really cool. We converted the U.2 enterprise grade system into a more user friendly should we say commercial setup? But that's a related video. You're going to have to check that if you're interested. A very small video. It won't take too long. Now for installation. All we have to do is take these tiny little NVMEs, slot them into the adapters of interest, of which there were six. Can you believe it? That's a lot of NVMe adapters. Don't worry, I'm not going to make you sit through all of it. That would take forever. But these are pretty straightforward. We fit our NVMe, add a little standoff, mount the screw at the back of the board, and... We're done! Times 20, in this case. It took quite a while. So we'll speed our way through. I'm sure you're familiar with this by now. As I said, if you're not, check out my related videos. I go through it in a bit more detail. But uh, now that we have these in, why do we need so many of these adapters? And why do we need so many NVMEs? Well, it's all because of RAID 0. We're going to take six NVMe adapters. That's a sum of around 20 NVMe's, as you can see here. And we're going to pull all of them into one storage pool. You heard that right. All of them are going to create one storage pool. 
And that's why we're going to outperform some of the more modern NVMEs. Has anyone done this? I don't think anyone's been crazy enough to do this. It's okay, I've got you on this. We're going to find out if this is viable, or maybe this just doesn't work. And if it doesn't work, that might be why no one's done this. I don't know. We'll find out. We're going to test it either way and see if we can break some speed records. That's going to give us a whole lot of storage space to do some testing with. Now, super important, this particular system I have equipped with a very casual 4 32 gig, 2666 megahertz of ECC memory. Now, can they outperform the modern NVMEs? Well, let's do some testing. I've loaded the system with all four quad adapters, and I also have the two dual adapters in the upper slots. So, in theory, with the JE adapter, that's going to give us 22 NVMEs. This is the ultimate test. We're going to run off an SSD as our OS. We don't really have any PCI slots left for OS anyway, so this is it. We're going to test to see if this can outperform. Oh wait, there's something missing. We ain't got no GPU. Wait, you can't even fit a GPU in there, can you? No, don't worry, I got you covered on this as well. You wouldn't have seen this coming. This is a near new... Oh dear, that's embarrassing. Okay, so it's a P1000. It's actually from a related video. You're going to see that in the future. The HP Z4 G4. We'll do a full teardown. Really cool system. But uh, I'm going to call this the nitpicking cleaning technique. I'm sure you're uh, familiar. This is actually the better technique. I call it the Iamono Talazi technique. It's a highly specialized technique that requires masking tape in order for us to remove some of the dust. So it's not because it's uh, 12 a.m. and my neighbors are complaining if they hear the air compressor. I can't blame them. So this is it. We have a tiny little GPU slotted into the only slot. Yes, it's going to be bottlenecked. But we don't really care for this, we're not doing some sort of gaming on this. We just want speed on our storage. Okay, it's all done. All we now need to do is, I guess, set up the bifurcation. That's right, we have to go into the BIOS, which isn't that difficult yet again, but I guess I'll give you a quick tutorial on that. We'll put the covers on and uh, see if we can configure all of the slot settings for the six NVMe adapters. Yeah, shouldn't be too difficult. Okay, here it is. Quick on switch on the HP Z8. Look at the aesthetics on that machine, it sure does look tidy. Now if you are wondering, that is a very cool USB screen. Check out a related video, it's awesome, and it's alive. Very important, we gotta hit escape to get into the BIOS settings. If you're too slow, you're gonna miss it. Now a shout out to this Bluetooth keyboard, it's such a reliable little thing, I've had it for many years, and it does such a good job. Now in the BIOS, we go to Advance and Slot Settings to unlock all of the goodness that is bifurcation. Now we do need to enable it on all the slots where we have multiple NVMEs. Now you might be familiar with Murphy's Law from Edward Murphy, but he basically said anything that can go wrong will go wrong. I think we're now entering step three. Is that the point where everything starts to break down maybe? Wait, is it just me or is that keyboard beginning to have a meltdown? Or maybe that's the CPU memory controller melting down. Or maybe both, I don't know. We shall find out, but for now we're trying to get these settings toggled. It looks like the keyboard sorted itself out, that's okay, we got all those settings toggled. We'll just fly our way through, but very important, we need to save those settings. And we should be good to go, like no, no troubles. Okay, we got this little spinny wheel, that's awesome, as long as that cat... Why is that frozen? Wait, that's frozen. Okay, it's going. <laughs> oh man, my heart stopped for half a second there. Okay, no, we're good, we're good. This system can totally hack this. We're not going to have any uh, prob prob problems, uh-oh. Okay, so it looks like we're installing hardware issues. Uh, something's not worked correctly. Now, gut instinct, it's probably a defective NVMe. It could be a defective adapter. It could be a CPU issue. It could also be a RAM issue. It could be anything. Oh dear. Is that a black screen? Okay, it's just not loaded anything. Um, I'll tell you what, we'll hard reset. 4,000 hours later, 400 Google searches and 40 chat GPT prompts. Hey, we got a boot screen. I wasn't worried. You looked worried. It's okay. Let's go into it. And uh, queue system failure. I think we're now officially in step three where everything breaks down. It's okay. I'm an expert at getting Windows to work when it doesn't work. Just see our control shift escape and uh, quickly do a run operation to get Explorer running. And yeah, the system bricked. I don't know why. It was an absolute terrible, terrible time. It just lagged out. Now, sometime later, and I had to remove all the hardware, full disclosure, we're down to almost nothing. We've got a little, little tiny GPU and the boot drive, and that's it. Well, that's a bit of a letdown, I know. It's okay, we just want to validate and see if we can get this thing running, because that was a disaster, nothing worked. So far, so good. We got half decent speeds. Remember, these are the lower end of the Gen 3 specification NVMe. They're not that great, and wait, chaos struck again. 
Okay, finally, the true error revealed itself. One of the memory modules failed in a spectacular way. Never seen anything like that. Now I pulled the CPU just in case we fried some circuitry, but by my eye it still looks okay, and the system let me know that I changed the configuration. Thank you, I can confirm I removed a CPU. Thank you for letting me know. But now we're in. We've done it. We've got a working system, but one CPU. That does limit our ability slightly. It's okay, we'll deal with that. But I did a few other post-system crash validation, including a BIOS test, some command prompt, and even a sign bench run, just to make sure we're okay. It seemed okay. Now for test ting. Stage four, rate zero testing. The results were fascinating. Due to the nature of the initial problem, we have a split pool, some of it's single CPU, some of it's multi-CPU, so two. Now here's the results. As we increased the number of NVMEs, we did not see a linear improvement in speed, which is kind of what I was expecting. So it does bottleneck. So far, it appears somewhere around five to six NVMEs give us the optimal speed in our RAID 0 pool. Any more, and we run into economies of scale. There's a horrible, horrible problem where we slow down. And when we go to dual CPU, again, it looked like around six or so NVMEs within the RAID 0 pool gave us the most optimal performance. Now, curiously, when I put 18 drives into that RAID 0 pool, it actually gave really low performance. So my conclusion here is, Six is the magic number. We don't need any more in our raid pool. Wait, that means I'm going to let you down because we didn't outperform the modern hardware. And I promise that we will. Okay, no, I got a plan. I got a plan. We can still do this because we have extra NVMEs. So I'll show you what we can do. If we go back to our Windows disk management, if we allocate these into little clusters, surely we can uh, pull those drives together and find a way to outperform even the latest and the greatest. I mean, those are the speeds we need to beat. And uh, sure enough, if we set up three separate pools of these RAID 1s, and we then pull those aggregate speeds together, we outperform the latest and the greatest with the old hardware. Only took 18 NVMEs. Now here's the crazy part. I think the 18 NVMEs might be cheaper than one of the new drives. That's, that's the crazy part. Don't ask me how I pulled that off. I got them on sale. But here's a nice final graph. So be warned, the best way to use that RAID to create a beautiful storage pool is to aim for, I'm going to say, five, maybe six NVMEs. Optimal performance. Any more, and you get diminishing returns. You've now been educated on what was a rather silly video, but hey, you never know. What if you want to make a massive RAID pool so you can do uh, some rendering on your video editing software? Or at least that's what I'm going to do with mine, but full disclosure, I'm actually going to break that RAID pool up and use the NVMEs for boot drives for all sorts of little projects for future videos. Stay tuned for that. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I'll see you on the next video. Race is E out.